So my name is Timon Gerr. I'm from ETH Zurich. I'm a PhD student there. And this is a joint work with Matthew, uh, Dana, Peter, Swarat, and Martin. Um, so as you all. All right, so as you all probably know, uh, neural networks are not robust against uh, input perturbations. So here we have three very nice images of roads, and as you can see, it's probably a good idea to go left here. But we have uh, three neural networks, the, the yellow, a green, and the, well, the red one. And one of those, okay, I didn't press. Okay. And one of those actually disagrees and uh, tells us to go to the right. And to be fair, uh, somebody was a bit evil here and actually uh, modified those images. So you can see some black patches, and uh, those are responsible for those misclassifications. But of course, we don't want this because as humans, we can see you should go left. And there are many uh, other ways to, okay. There are many other kinds of adversarial attacks on deep learning models. For example, you can actually impersonate someone else in like the, by, by just uh, wearing some sort of uh, funky goggles. And there's uh, also a text that, okay, there are also texts that actually are not perceptible by a human. So here we can have, we have an image of a panda bear and then we add some noise to it and now the neural net is actually very confident that this is a given. And there's been a lot of I work on attacking neural networks, also some uh, heuristic defenses that empirically improve robustness a little bit, but there's been less work on proving that neural networks actually do what they're supposed to do in the sense of uh, they don't behave differently on specific images if you just change the image a little bit. And in this work, we're trying to address this And we want to prove that there are no robustness violations around a specific image. And what we want is we want a system that is automated and actually scales to real neural nets. So this is the problem statement. So we have a neural network that, uh, well, it maps inputs to outputs. Some of the outputs are possible. Uh, some of the inputs are possible, those are the inputs that the attacker can cause by perturbing a particular image, for example, and we have a safe set of outputs. So this could be all the outputs that classify to the same thing. And the challenge here is that X, X may contain a lot of inputs. So uh, there are many possible attacks and we need to defend against all of them. And existing uh, solutions based on SMT actually do not scale to a large network. They, they work well for small networks, but if you have large neural nets, they stop working. And the key inside of this work is that we can use AI to analyze neural nets. And by AI, I mean, of course, abstract interpretation. And uh, who knows about abstract interpretation? Okay, not, not a lot of people. So abstract interpretation is actually about uh, 40 years old, which means that uh, maybe it will become the next big thing soon. But it also means that it had a lot of time to develop and what abstract interpretation actually is, and this will be the most technical slide of this talk. Okay. It's, it's a theory for approximating program behavior. So we have a program and now we want to say, uh, well, what, what can this program do? And we're satisfied if uh, somebody tells us, well, it can do at most this. This means that abstract interpretation, it is sound, so if it proves something, it holds, but it's incomplete. It usually won't prove everything you can. And the ingredients for abstract interpretation are you have some abstract domain, and each element of the abstract domain uh, represents some set, so you can think some geometric shape. And you have this gamma function that tells you which shape it represents. And then you have abstract transformers that uh, preserve this approximation property. So if we have something that approximates A and we take the image through F, then the abstract transformer of F will give us something whose concretization is an over approximation to the actual outputs. 
and abstract domains have some uh, standard set of built-in operations, uh, what we need are this meet operator, which just intersects a given abstract element, element with some linear constraints. We have a join operator that combines two uh, abstract elements and gives you back a combination, and we have an affine transformer, which is just an abstract transformer for an affine transformation. So there will be some more images, uh, for example, this one. So what this shows is that there are actually different abstract domains. One of them is just the box domain, it's illustrated in blue, and this is what standard interval arithmetic will give you. So it will tell you that the output is somewhere in this box. Then in green we have the sonotope abstract domain, and a sonotope is just an image of an m-dimensional hypercube uh, under some affine transformation. And so it's some sort of a symmetric uh, polytope. And we have, um, okay. Can we go back once? Thanks. So we have uh, the polyhedra domain, which is just some convex set. And uh, we have four points here. The blue points, they are approximated. Then we apply some function, and we will get some other uh, shape. And all the four points will still be in this new shape. And this is what the abstract interpretation does. So, now, what are neural nets? So neural networks are just some compositions of layers, and for us, each layer is either a fully connected layer, a convolutional layer, or a max pooling layer. And our goal will be to define abstract transformers for each layer type, because abstract interpretation is compositional. So if you can do it for two functions, you can do it for their composition. It may not be the best uh, way to do it, but you can. So this is a high-level illustration of how abstract interpretation of neural nets works. We have an image of an eight, and they say, well, every pixel that is white, probably you can make it brighter, and you will still get an eight. And this will give you a number of different images, here represented by blue points, which you can over-approximate by this green abstract uh, element. And then everything, uh, can you go back? Thanks. Everything be beyond that is the neural net. So we have a convolutional layer followed by a max pooling layer followed by a fully connected layer. And they will all operate on this shape and give you some other shape that over approximates the result. So you have also some red points. Those are points that cannot occur in practice, but uh, are included as possible behaviors by abstract interpretation. And the final property you will check on uh, A4. OK. So. Uh, neural nets usually use this sort of ReLU activation or some other nonlinear activation function. What ReLU does is just it picks all the neurons in a layer and caps them to zero. So if they're negative, the activations will become zero. Right. Can I go back? Thanks. And the ReLU abstract transformer therefore just um, intersects. So it's, it's a composition of n transformers, one for each of the neurons. And it just intersects the abstract element with these conditions that it's smaller than zero or larger equal to zero. If it's smaller than zero, it will set it to zero using the affine transformer. And this is an illustration. Uh, we have an abstract element, then we split it into two. You can see that each of those two is an over approximation to what you would get uh, if you intersected actually with this constraint. Uh, then we apply the relevant transformations to both of them and join them together in the end to get something that over approximates both branches. And for other layer types, I mean, for fully connected layers, it's easy. So a fully connected layer is just an affine transformation followed by a ReLU activation. So we can just use the affine transformer, which is provided by the extra domain, and follow it with the ReLU transformer. Then there are also convolutional layers and uh, convolutions. Uh, so neural networks sometimes convolve a given layer with some multiple filters. And these filters are actually just linear functions, so we can obtain some sparse matrix such that uh, this convolution layer is actually equivalent to a fully connected layer, and then we use the same approach. And we also have max pooling layers, but in the interest of time, uh, you can see in the paper if you're interested. We have implemented this approach. It was initially based on uh, the apron library. Now it's based on Elena, which is in-house. And uh, what we've observed is that the sonotope abstract domain strikes a good balance between precision and scalability. So we've evaluated our approach, of course. So here you can see uh, results on a convolutional neural network with a lot of neurons. Uh, 
we, we showed that the box domain is faster than the sonotope domain, and we have also tried polyhedra domain, but it was too slow, so it didn't terminate at all. Uh, this took less than one hour, but those, uh, those results are out of date. Uh, and now we can do actually a little bit better than that, also in terms of precision. Then we've also compared to existing methods to certify things, so there are SMT-based methods that actually just solve a set of constraints and are uh, complete in theory, but of course will time out. We have set a time out of one hour here. And as you can see, Reluplex shows this sort of very uh, exponential scaling, whereas with abstract interpretation, uh, you, you don't see it that early. So we have here uh, a sonotope domain, we have sonotope 64, which is the same as sonotope, but we keep up to 64 different sonotopes to get some more precision. And as you can see, our approach actually verifies more than Reluplex within this uh, time limit of one hour. In the future, or actually right now, we're using abstract interpretation to train the neural network. Uh, we are adding support for more activation functions, so not just Relu, but also sigmoid and Tenedge. And uh, we are improving the abstract transformers by specializing them to the abstract domain. So everything you've seen today is very generic. We can actually do better by uh, doing abstract transformers directly for the sonotopes. And we're also deriving data parallel abstract transformers. So uh, to summarize, neural networks are not robust. Uh, we can use abstract interpretation to show that for specific images, uh, you, you cannot uh, get the necessary perturbations. We have defined after transformers for uh, common layers, and our approach is quite precise and scales. So I will be happy to answer questions, also offline, if you like. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, we have some time to, uh, for, for some questions. Um, and I'd like to start with, uh, with one question. So uh, you said that this type of analysis is obviously not, not complete. So based on your experience, um, what are some examples where this approach uh, fails to find a proof? Uh, well, uh, they are all in the paper, actually. So we have improved the approach now. And for uh, some of the benchmarks, we can actually now prove 100% of them. So. So basically, the, the takeaway is that uh, the, you can get more or less precision based on uh, uh, what your abstract transformers are. I think we have a question there. Hi, thank you very much. Very interesting work. So I have a question about the, about the e evaluation. It shows that uh, it, it, this seems only a one-layer convolution neural network. Right? Have you tried larger networks? Uh, this was just an illustrative example. This is not what we evaluated on. So uh -huh, what yeah, we evaluated so on well, actually has a lot of layers. Uh, we had feed-forward neural nets with uh, nine layers, for example. I see. And uh, the convolutional net, I don't really remember how many layers it had, but I think like six oh. or something. Uh, can you go back to one slide? OK. So <laughs> for the experiment, I, I didn't hear clearly. So what is the data set you are, are you using? Sorry? Uh, what is the data set? Ah, the data set, yeah, yes, yeah. Uh, very good point. So it's uh, MNIST and CIFAR 10. Oh, thank you. All right, then uh, if there are no more questions, then let's thank the speaker.